In this section, we will review series and parallel circuits and Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws. Some characteristics of series circuits are as follows. Components are connected one after the other in a series fashion. The same current will flow through each component. The sum of the voltage drops across all the components will equal the supply voltage. This is Kirchhoff's voltage law. The largest resistance has the largest voltage drop. If you add resistance, the current will drop in value. One open anywhere in the circuit, and the circuit fails. The total resistance is the sum of all the resistors. R sub T would be equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. This is an example of solving a series circuit problem using tables. This is a very powerful technique and enables a beginning student to solve rather complex circuit problems as easily as working a crossword puzzle. Arrange the table with columns for each parameter being measured, voltage, current, resistance, and power. On the far left column, list all the components in the circuit. So as you look across each row, you will have an entry for the voltage, current, and power of each component. The first step is to enter the data that you know. This would be the power supply voltage of 60 volts and values of all the resistors, R1 equal 4 k ohms, R2 equal 2 k ohms, and R3 equals 14 k ohms. Next, using the fact that the equivalent resistance of a series circuit is the sum of all the resistors, add up all the resistors to get a total resistance of 20 k ohms. Now compute the total current flowing in the circuit by dividing the power supply voltage by the total resistance. So 60 volts divided by 20 k ohms equals 3 milliamps. And we enter this value into the table. Since this is a series circuit, the same current flows through all of the components. So we enter 3 milliamps for each component. We can now compute the voltage across each resistor by using Ohm's law, where voltage equals current times resistance. The voltage drop across R1 would be 0 0.003 amps times 4,000 ohms equals 12 volts. The voltage drop across R2 would be 0 0.003 amps times 2,000 ohms equals 6 volts. The voltage drop across R3 would be 0 0.003 amps times 14,000 ohms equals 42 volts. Now let's look at power. First we compute the power supplied to the circuit by the 60 volt power supply. Power equals voltage times current, so we multiply 60 volts times 0.003 amps to get 0.18 watts, or 180 milliwatts. Next, we compute the power dissipated by R1. Again, we compute the power by multiplying the voltage across the resistor times the current flowing through it, and get 12 volts times 0.003 amps equals 0.036 watts, or 36 milliwatts. Similarly, for R2, the power dissipated is 6 volts times 0.003 amps equals 0.018 watts, or 18 milliwatts. For R3, the power dissipated is 42 volts times 0.003 amps equals 0.126 watts, or 126 milliwatts. Note that the sum of the power dissipated by the three resistors adds up to the power supplied by the power supply. Note also that the sum of the voltages across each resistor adds up to equal the power supply voltage. This is a series circuit containing a 24 volt source and two resistors, R1 and R2 in series. R2 is good and its value is 4 ohms. R1 is open, so its resistance is infinity. The total resistance in this circuit is the sum of the resistors. In this case, the total resistance is infinite. Current equals voltage divided by resistance. So 24 volts divided by infinity equals a current of 0 amps. And since this is a series circuit, the current is zero through all of the resistors as well. The power dissipated by this circuit will be zero because the current is zero. The voltage across R1 will be the source voltage of 24 volts. If you were to place a voltmeter across R1, you would measure the source voltage of 24 volts. This is one good clue that you have an open resistor. If you are probing around a circuit and measure the source voltage across a resistor, look again, it may be open. The voltage across R2 is zero because it does not have any current flowing through it. Here is a series circuit with a shorted resistor, R3, that has a resistive value of zero ohms. As before, enter the data that you know, that is, that the total voltage is 60 volts. R1 equals 4,000 ohms. 
R2 equals 2,000 ohms, and R3 equals 0 ohms. Then compute the total resistance by adding up R1 plus R2 plus R3 equals 4,000 plus 2,000 plus 0 equals 6,000 ohms, or 6K ohms. Enter this data as the total resistance. Now compute the total current flowing in the circuit by dividing the source voltage of 60 volts by the total resistance of 6,000 ohms. This results in a total current of 0.01 amps, or 10 milliamps. Since this is a series circuit, the 10 milliamp current flows through all of the resistors. The voltage across R1 is equal to the current times the resistance, or V1 equals 4,000 ohms times 0.01 amps equals 40 volts. The voltage across R2 is equal to the current times the resistance, or V2 equals 2,000 ohms times 0.01 amps equals 20 volts. The voltage across R3 is equal to the current times the resistance, or V3 equals 0 ohms times 0.01 amps equals 0 volts. The total power provided to the circuit equals the 60 volts times 0.01 amps equals 0.6 watts, or 600 milliwatts. And then the power dissipated by R1 is P1 equals V1 times I1 equals 40 volts times 0.01 amps equals 0.4 watts, or 400 milliwatts. The power dissipated by R2 is P2 equals V2 times I2 equals 20 volts times 0.01 amps equals 0.2 watts, or 200 milliwatts. And the power dissipated by R3 is P3 equals V3 times I3 equals 0 volts times 0.01 amps equals 0 watts, or 0 milliwatts. Note that the total power dissipated in the resistors equals the total power supplied to the circuit by the power supply. That is 400 plus 200 milliwatts equals 600 milliwatts. Note that the sum of the voltage drops across the resistors equals the supply voltage. That is that 40 plus 20 volts equals 60 volts. Before you can successfully troubleshoot a circuit, you must know how the circuit is supposed to work. In a series circuit, you know that the sum of the voltages across all of the components must equal the source voltage. If you see that all the source voltage appears across only one of the components, then you know that there is an open in that circuit, that no current is flowing, and the component that has the source voltage across it has failed and is open. A short in a series circuit manifests itself in the form of a higher than normal current in the circuit, and the component that is shorted will have a zero volts across it. Keep these facts in mind as you approach a problem in a circuit. Also a point to remember is that power sources are a primary contributor to failed circuits. The very first thing you should do is make sure the power supply is functioning properly. Sometimes all you need to do is plug it in, and other times it may need a fuse. Parallel circuits are different than series circuits. In parallel circuits, the same voltage is across all the components. Each circuit that is tied in parallel is called a branch. A branch may contain one or more components, as in one, two, or more resistors that are in series in that branch. The branch with the smallest resistance will have the most current. If a branch is added to an existing circuit, the total current in the circuit will increase, and the total resistance of the parallel circuit will decrease. If one branch opens, the total current will be smaller than normal. The total resistance of a parallel network is less than the smallest resistor. Now this is a great check on any calculation that you may be performing. You can use this property to get a quick read on what the overall resistance of the circuit may be, and in turn use this to estimate the current. Be sure and put this into your mental tool bag. The general equation for calculating the total resistance of a parallel circuit is derived on this chart. The total resistance would be equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 uh, on out to 1 over R sub n. Now this equation is a little different than most equations, but a simple four-function calculator with a summing accumulating register will mop this one up just fine. It is as simple as dividing 1 by R1 and putting the result into the accumulator then dividing 1 by R2 and summing it into the accumulator, and continue on until you have all of the 1 over R sub n added up. Then you recall the number from the accumulator, hit the 1 over X key, and then you have the total resistance. It is instructive to examine the parallel circuit. See that all the resistors are connected across the voltage source, V sub total, and each resistor makes up a branch with its own branch current that is equal to V sub t divided by the resistance in that branch. So the current I1 in branch I1 is V sub T divided by R1. 
and the current I2 in branch 2 is V sub t divided by R2, and so on all the way out to branch n. And the sum of the branch currents all add up to equal the total current in the circuit. This is Kirchhoff's current law, where all of the current entering a junction also exits that junction. Here we say that the total current is split among the branch currents. Let's work a parallel network problem. Looking at this circuit, we see that resistor R2 has a voltage across it of 24 volts. Since this is a parallel circuit, all of the branches will have 24 volts across them, and the power supply voltage is 24 volts also. Other data provided is the total current of 5.5 amps. The value of R2 equals 16 ohm, and R3 equals 24 ohm. No value is given for the resistance of R1. Just as before, we put what we know into the table first. Looking at the table, we have enough information to calculate the currents in R2 and R3. I2 equals 24 volts divided by 16 ohms equals 1.5 amps. Then we calculate I3 equals 24 volts divided by 24 ohms equals 1 amp. We don't know the current through R1, but Kirchhoff's current law says that the sum of all the branch currents has to equal the total current. We can use this information to calculate I1 by subtracting I1 and I3 from the total current IT. Then I1 equals 5.5 minus 1.5 minus 1 equals 3 amps. Now we can calculate the value of the resistance of R1. We know the voltage across it and the current through it. So R1 equals 24 volts divided by 3 amps equals 8 ohms. Looking at the bottom of the chart, we have the total voltage and the total current. So we can calculate the total resistance of the parallel circuit by dividing 24 volts by 5.5 amps. This gives 4.36 ohms as the total resistance of the parallel circuit. The total power supply to this circuit by the power source is 24 volts times 5.5 amps equals 132 watts. The power dissipated by R1 is 24 volts times 3 amps equals 72 watts. The power dissipated by R2 is 24 volts times 1.5 amps equals 36 watts. The total power dissipated by R3 is 24 volts times 1 amp equals 24 watts. Ask yourself, does the power dissipated in the circuit equal the power supplied to the circuit? 72 plus 36 watts equals 104 watts plus 24 watts equals 132 watts. So the answer is yes. The power dissipated in resistors R1, R2, and R3 equals the power supplied to the circuit by the power source. This circuit has resistor R1 shorted. The switch in the branch with R1 will be used to connect branch 1 into the circuit. The effects of a shorted branch in a parallel circuit are not very pretty. This is because you have shorted the power source and the maximum possible current will flow until something breaks. Hopefully the circuit breaker will trip and break the circuit to stop current flow. Yes, the circuit breaker opened and stopped the current flow. The circuit has been saved. The power source has been saved. Troubleshooting a parallel circuit. If there is no voltage across the parallel branches, check to see if the power supply is turned on. Then check the fuse or circuit breaker. If the fuse is blown, then there's probably a short in one of the branches. Is there current flowing from the power supply? Is it the correct amount of current? If the current is lower than normal, a branch may be open. If the current is much higher than normal, then there may be a short in one of the branches. Okay, this is a test. Do you remember Kirchhoff's voltage law? Do you recall that the sum of the voltage drops around the loop must equal the source voltage in that loop? That V total equals V1 plus V2 plus V3 and so on? Look at V2. V2 equals current times resistance equals 2 amp times 4 ohms equals 8 volts. If you know the current through a resistor and you know the value of the resistor, you can always calculate the voltage drop across that resistor. So V1 equals 2 amps times 2 ohms equals 4 volts. V3 equals 2 amps times 6 ohms equals 12 volts. And V1 equals V2 plus V3 equals 4 volts plus 8 volts plus 12 volts equals 24 volts. So the sum of the voltage drops across R1, R2, and R3 equals the source voltage of 24 volts. Kirchhoff had a current law too, remember? That is that the current entering a junction must equal the current leaving that junction. Hence, I in equals I out. In this representation, it means that the sum of the branch currents must equal the supply current. 
So I2 amps plus 6 amps plus 4 amp must equal 22 amps supply current, and it does.